Are we really doing this? Okay, we're really doing this. Let's talk about Velma. I really don't know how we got here. How the entertainment business turned into... this. How HBO's normally excellent quality control suddenly took up residence in a septic tank. How, after 2022 subjected us to some of the most awful trash I've ever seen masquerading as television, I could have fooled myself into thinking that 2023 might be any different. And most of all, how certain talentless pieces of human refuse still manage to know enough of the right people in Hollywood that they're able to fail upward to such a baffling degree that they continue to be handed major IPs and properties with the freedom to blatantly spit in the faces of not just their own audience, but the only industry stupid enough to actually employ them. But here we are, with me having just suffered through the first four torturous episodes of Velma. And because I desperately need to expunge this toxicity from my system before I vomit all over my keyboard, you're gonna hear all about it. God help us all. This video will be a little different from what I normally do. Usually, I like to either cover the entire season at once, like with Wednesday or the Dragon Prince, or go episode by episode, like with Batwoman or She-Hulk. <sighs> but I'm not doing that this time, because either of those options would require me to watch more of this... thing, while just these four episodes were enough to make me want to replace the milk in my cereal with Drano. Trust me, Velma is so unspeakably terrible, it doesn't even deserve the dignity of being hate-watched. And frankly, I don't need to see any more. There's nothing Mindy Kaling can pull out of her ass that's gonna change my mind at this point, and the sooner I get this godforsaken blight on HBO Max in my rear view, the better. Now, before I get to the show itself, I need to talk about one thing. Respect. Now, I'm not even a big Scooby-Doo guy or anything, but I do see why the franchise has lasted so long. Because when it's good, it's good. Been around for five plus decades now, been through a lot of iterations, some better than others, my favorite being Mystery Incorporated from a few years back. That show was great. It was funny, smart, very charming, had a good story, and it could be enjoyed by adults just as much as kids. And why is that? Because you had talented creators who knew what they were doing, who obviously loved the source material, respected the audience, and respected the IP they were responsible for for the unfortunately brief time the show lasted. And you know what happens when a Scooby-Doo show has none of those things? Yeah. Thanks for nothing, Mindy Kaling. This is an interview from Entertainment Weekly. It's all pretty discouraging, but the part that really stood out to me was this bit here. I identify so much as her character, which is really head-scratching in a project wherein the first order of business seems to have been to radically change everything about the character to be more like you. And I'm not even talking about the race bending, though that is part of it. And hey, while we're at it, why don't we go ahead and change everything about all the other characters too, until until everyone is so completely loathsome, repellent, and unrecognizable that the show ceases to have anything to do with the Scooby-Doo franchise and becomes something completely different. Which, I have no doubt, was the show these dipshits wanted a TV deal for originally, but they couldn't get one until they decided to piggyback on a beloved IP and name it after a member of the Scooby gang who didn't have a talking dog. Because why would anyone want to see that, right? So there's some food for thought. This is, for all intents and purposes, an original show. Because if you just change the names of the characters, an original show would have about as much, if not more, in common with Scooby-Doo, or Velma for that matter, as this does. But apparently HBO Max wasn't interested in self-insert fanfiction until these clowns figured, well... What if we did the same thing, but with the Scooby-Doo characters instead? And we'll focus it on Velma, because what better character to be a vehicle for us to take pot shots at all those jaded whiny trolls on Twitter who are gonna be hate-watching us every week? BT dubs, you can go ahead and disregard this part. No fans were involved in the making of this travesty. Though I do find it funny that she claims to love the character so much when the number one priority of the show seems to have been to make Velma about as lovable as a bad case of hell. Hepatitis. 
Little side note here, I just love how that whole actors should be the same ethnicity as the cartoon characters they voice thing only applies when it's convenient. A white actor voicing a black character needs to GTFO so an actor of color can take over the role, but if an Indian actor wants to voice a white character, let's just change the character to fit the actor. Yeah, that's not narcissistic at all. Not the only character the writers are pulling that stunt with either. They're saying the quiet part out loud with most of these people. And speaking of narcissism, they've clearly decided to let their own petty, petulant, personal, and political views dictate how they write these characters because I cannot recall a more grating, unlikable, detestable cast of assholes in all the time I've been doing this. Nothing about this is faithful to the characters. Everything has some kind of agenda attached to it. And the only method of the writer's madness that I can see is that all these decisions appear to have been made with the question in mind of how many Twitter trolls living in their parents' basement can we piss off with this one? Daphne is now a race-bent Asian mean girl stereotype with two lesbian moms and is a drug dealer. That to me was the weirdest part. The first iteration of Daphne to be Asian is also the first one to be a drug dealer and also a huge bitch. Velma's words, not mine. Like, I'm not sure which part of this I'm supposed to be offended by, but offending people seems to be the whole reason it was done. Case in point, wow. Just, wow. Yeah, Fred probably gets it the worst out of all these poor bastards. And by complete coincidence, I'm sure, He's the only one who's still white. Fred has been reimagined as a vessel for everything the writers hate about rich people, white people, and men in general. That he was just another entitled rich guy who might kill someone because he has a tiny dong. He's now a spoiled, helpless, clueless, pathetically insecure idiot man-baby with a very, very small penis. That last part being something the writers are really creepily fascinated by. In the second episode alone, and yes, I counted them, there are five separate jokes about how incredibly small Fred's penis is. And most of that isn't even for story either. They're just shitting on this guy for no reason. The real cherry on the cake being the one at the end though, after Fred is falsely accused of murder and Velma tries to what the writers claim is exonerate him, but really is just an excuse for them to humiliate him even more when Velma goes on live TV and says that Fred can't possibly be the killer because he's a pathetic, helpless, spoiled man baby. And did I mention he has a really small penis? Because it's so small, you guys. You need a damn microscope to see that f***ing thing. Yeah. So that's Fred now, but at least he more or less still looks like he's supposed to look. This doesn't count, which is more than I can say for Norville, though he seems to be the one exception to the raging river of bile spewing out of all these hateful dipshits, because Norville is the one character who so far is not being written like an absolutely despicable person. But don't get ahead of yourselves, because the writers compensated for that by race bending him into a black dude who breastfed until until he was five, yes really, has no self-respect to speak of, and is such an unapologetically pathetic simp for Velma that even though she treats him like garbage and only seems to associate with him because he has a car and he can drive her around and stuff, he tries to sell one of his own kidneys for money to blackmail her into going out with him, which is not even the most humiliating thing that happens to him in that episode. And I'd like to say that at least he's the one actual sympathetic character here, at least you want to root for him to get over this crap, but I can't even do that much. The writers burned that bridge when they gave him a monologue where he talks disdainfully about the exact lifestyle and archetype that made Shaggy an enduring popular character for over five decades. And it doesn't come off like character deconstruction or playing against type or whatever. It honestly just feels like the writers are staring into the camera right at us and saying, hey fans, you know that character Shaggy that you guys all like because of these reasons? Well, he sucks, and we hate him. I think it has something to do with drugs, which I hate. Yeah, rest assured, there's a whole lot of hate going around on this show. And there's no better embodiment of that than our title character. I don't think there's a better encapsulation of the current state of the entertainment industry and the people who work in it than this iteration of Velma. Again, the only resemblance she has to the real Velma is the name. Take that away, and you wouldn't even recognize her. She's cynical, bitter, hateful, spiteful, racist, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. I call bullshit on this show being the story of how the Scooby 
Scooby Gang became friends. I cannot imagine anyone ever wanting to be friends with this version of Velma because she treats absolutely everyone in her life, including her supposed friends, with nothing but contempt. And she's not the only one. Turns out there's a hell of a lot of that to be found here. These characters are absolutely horrible to each other. Here's a few examples of what I'm talking about. And I need to stress to you, the characters are acting like this all the time. Daphne tries to drown a girl in the shower for arguing with her about TV tropes. At the wake of a girl who was murdered, her friend giving the eulogy points out that the murdered girl was a big slut. Daphne pressures Fred for sex, and when he doesn't go for it, she shames him and, I guess, breaks up with him for being self-conscious about his body. Norville confesses his feelings to Velma, and she laughs at him for it. A lot. That happens multiple times. It starts to feel pretty cruel actually. Daphne refuses to admit that she has feelings for Velma because doing so would damage her popularity, so to get back at her for this, Velma tries to humiliate her by stealing Daphne's diary and reading it in front of the whole school. And last but not least, this one's my favorite. Fred is wrongly convicted of a crime he didn't commit and sent to prison, and Velma's only regret about this is that she's so distracted by her own problems that she's unable to enjoy the fact that it's happening to a white person. And those were just the first ones I thought of. But make no mistake, the entire show is like that. Everyone we meet is just a miserable, hateful piece of garbage. All they do is try to hurt each other. Even random background characters aren't immune to this. There's a recurring bit where some kid at the school keeps getting his leg chopped off. He didn't even do anything. They're just punishing this poor bastard for no reason. Actually, no, I take that back. There is a reason. He's white. Are you getting a clear picture here? This is the most mean-spirited show I've ever f***ing seen! I don't think there's a single scene that goes by where someone is not insulting someone else. And usually, there's no purpose behind it whatsoever except just being mean. Like, two people will be walking down a hallway having a normal conversation, and they'll be like, Hey, that girl's a huge bitch. Or, that guy's got a small penis. Ha ha ha, what a f***ing loser. Or, yeah, Fred's in prison for murder, and I know he's innocent, but he's a white male, so that makes it okay. Because f white males, am I right? Ah, I just wish I didn't have so much of my own stuff to deal with so I could really enjoy it, though. Man, does my life suck. Paraphrasing slightly on that last one, but holy shit, the message was pretty f***ing clear. All the characters are assholes, everyone hates everyone, and the only thing the writers cared about in all this was using the show to express their own hatred for men, white people, the audience, and the Scooby-Doo IP itself, while also using this as an opportunity to either shit on or take credit for everything the fans might like and be mean, spiteful, distasteful, resentful cunts about everything else on the goddamn planet that pisses them off. That, my son, is a lifetime achievement at the Cunt of the Year Awards. Not that they're above using those things themselves just to be assholes whenever the shit they please, though. Far from it. For instance, the show is super obsessed with stereotypes and stereotype-based humor. Yeah, humor, I use that word f***ing loosely. But characters are constantly using racial, ethnic stereotypes to make these really mean digs at each other, even at people who haven't done anything wrong. Fred's a rich white dude with a tiny dong. Of course he's guilty of murder. If I were a rich white dude, I'd kill everybody just to get away with it. I thought lesbians were supposed to be good at solving crimes. That's like the one positive stereotype perpetuated by cop shows. Don't let that last one fool you, though. These writers are not interested in positive stereotypes, only ones they can use to throw rocks at one demographic or another. Their favorite, by far, being men. You want more receipts? Because I got him. In one episode, it's determined that all the killer's victims so far have been hot girls. So naturally, the episode is just loaded with the writers complaining about men being horrible to women, and the patriarchy's idea of female beauty norms, and the toxicity of the male gaze. <sighs> For the record, the characters have no idea if the killer is a man. They all assume it's a man, but it could be a woman. They don't know, and they don't care. But the killer being a man makes all men everywhere a more convenient target. Therefore, the killer must be male. But the best part is at the end, when after the girl characters have spent the entire episode demonizing the male gaze and complaining about how wrong it is that men put pressure on women to look hot, all in the name of striking a blow against slut-shaming, the hot girls demand a police detail to protect them from the killer, but with no uggo cops, 
only beefcake cops. So the moral of the story is that women treat men just as horribly as men treat women, but it's only a bad thing when men do it. How wonderfully insightful. And what gets me about this is that the writers obviously knew exactly what they were doing with that whole thing, they just didn't care, and presented it as a big F you to everyone who might correctly think it was a giant load of crap. Because for some reason, and there's tons of examples of this, the writers think that being self-aware about being horrible somehow gives them carte blanche to be as horrible as they possibly can. Now don't get me wrong, self-awareness in a TV show is usually a good thing. When you understand how stories or characters are going to be perceived ahead of time, you can kind of turn things on their heads and that can lead to some really clever and entertaining situations if you know what you're doing. But from minute one, the Velma writer's mentality is that they want to do all these things they must know are utterly despicable that they shouldn't be able to get away with, but as long as they call these things out for being despicable, that means they have a free pass to do it all they want after they just told us that it wasn't okay. Which applies to a lot of things in this show. And they usually try to wrap it up in this veneer of some kind of awkward meta commentary on whatever a scene happens to be about, but there's no rhyme or reason to the commentary. They're not trying to really say anything or create a discussion about a particular issue. It'll just be like, we want to do this really dumb and tasteless thing that other shows have done, but now audiences have gotten wise to it. So we'll just have the characters talk about how other shows do it, then we'll have an excuse to do it ourselves in an even more tacky and gross way under the guise of us commenting on the issue. And sure, more often than not, this commentary has nothing to do with what the actual episode is about, but that doesn't matter. We just want to do it because we're f***ing talentless hacks trying to be cute. That is literally how the show starts. In the cold open of the premiere episode, wherein the writers somehow managed to do absolutely everything wrong, by the way, there is a scene where a bunch of girl characters are arguing about certain TV tropes, which I mentioned before. The first argument has our newly minted Asian Daphne involved in a bit slash diatribe about colorblind casting. Again, this topic has nothing to do with the rest of the episode, it's just the writers trying to get ahead of the meanies on Twitter who don't like all the race bending they did with the Scooby gang. But rather than being fair and measured about it, and trying to express through the writing how this change has merit because of A, B, and C, and if the fans just give it a chance they might see that and even get on board with it like Battlestar Galactica fans did once upon a time, instead the writer's mentality is, oh, you don't like that Daphne is Asian now? You liked her the way she was before? You didn't see any reason to change her? Well, T.S. We're doing what we want with this character, and if you don't like it, then go f*** yourself. Bitch. As an Asian woman, I, um, think it's cool. Jesus Christ, writers. If you wanted to make Daphne Asian or Velma Indian, you didn't have to f***ing weaponize them at the same time. And for the record, the part that I think is bothering people a lot more than the race bending is that you change Daphne and Velma from charming, lovable characters into mean, miserable, unlikable pieces of shit, just like you did with everyone else. It's the exact same crap the She-Hulk writers pulled, where the whole intelligentsia story was just a way to take pot shots at male fans on Twitter. Twitter, who had the audacity to voice opinions about their show that they didn't like. The whole point was just to attack the fans for not liking things the writers think they should, and then also attack them for liking things the writers think they shouldn't. A tactic the Velma writers are also employing, by the way. Because the second TV trope argument, and this is the big one, is how lots of shows load up their pilot episodes with gratuitous sex and nudity to get the viewers' attention. Like the Mrs. Maisel premiere had Rachel Brosnahan show her boobs, and the Riverdale premiere had Betty and Veronica kiss, which went f***ing nowhere. It was literally done just so they could put it in the trailer to titillate people. And now that we've made a meta commentary out of this, we have a green light to show you, the audience, a bunch of hot naked girls showering together. Oh sure, we're gonna shame the f*** out of you for your male gaze later on, but right now, gawk all you want. That's what it's there for. And that was uncomfortable enough already, but then you have to take into account that these girls girls are teenagers in high school, and since this show takes place before the Scooby Gang was ever formed, 
they're very likely underage. And this is the really disgusting part. Even with as awful as everything is, by far the creepiest aspect of Velma is the writer's attitude towards sex. And I need to be very careful how I do this because some of the things in this show come dangerously close to something that YouTube would strike this video down for if I even talked about it. But I can't not talk about it because it's in there. This is what the show is about. And people need to know because these freaks shouldn't be allowed to get away with this. For reasons I prefer not to think about, the writers have a very uncomfortable hang-up with sexualizing these characters. And yeah, that's nothing new in the dark and gritty reboot era, but here it's taking on a context that almost feels like it should put the cast and crew on a watch list of some kind. Throughout these first four episodes, there are a number of lines that try to frame various things in a sexual way. You'll often see characters being put in sexually suggested positions. There's the shower scene I just went over. During the Velma Daphne makeout session, you see a little bit of tongue action in there. And there's nothing you wouldn't necessarily see on an episode of Family Guy or something like that. And granted, all the naughty bits are covered up so far. So I don't think there's anything here that they could get arrested for technically. But in what used to be a family-friendly environment where these characters have traditionally been under 18 as far as I know, this just feels like it was done for all the wrong reasons. Now, at least with those characters, the writers can play the card of, well, we never said they're not 18 in this version. But again, the one who really gets the worst of this is Fred. Because Fred is the character the show is portraying as being overtly childish. So when you have Daphne grabbing Fred's ass, or when the writers can't seem to stop making remarks about Fred's tiny appendage, it starts to feel like the show is crossing a line here that should not be crossed even on HBO. The bit that really made me want to turn this shit off and immediately delete my browser history was when Fred is on trial for that murder he didn't commit and his lawyer on the case says that he's going to ride Fred's baby carrot all the way to victory. And this is about a character who openly admits to not even being done going through puberty yet, even though they say late bloomer like that makes it okay because because he might also be over 18 somehow. It's so gross and so creepy. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. The fact that I ever saw it in the first place is bad enough. And that's about everything I wanted to cover, so I'll end with this. The show begins with Velma saying, this is my story told my way. And from minute one, that felt to me like not Velma talking to the audience, but Mindy Kaling and the writers talking to the audience. Because nothing about this is Velma's story. This is raunchy, creepy, self-indulgent, self-insert fanfic inflicted on us by a bunch of cultural arsonist clowns who didn't give a rat's ass about the characters and the IP they were dragging through a puddle of dog shit in the process. This isn't a reimagining of the Scooby-Doo franchise as something dark and gritty for a more mature audience like Fate the Wink Saga tried to do or something. This is reimagining Scooby-Doo for a petulant, pervy audience that hates the franchise and wants to see it burn to the ground so no one can ever enjoy it again. This is a reimagining that even the makers of Riverdale would look down on. This is the show you get when there is no respect to be had anywhere. This is the show you get when the writers and producers resent everything about Scooby-Doo and their only interest is in covering the franchise with filth until everything about it from the characters to the story to the lore to the fans is every bit as ugly as they are. Just admit, we are all secretly perverts. This show violates Velma and the Scooby-Doo IP in ways I feel dirty even thinking about. And you know what the worst part is? Right after watching this thing, I watched The Last of Us. And I don't know what kind of adaptation of the video game it is, but just as a piece of media, a piece of entertainment, that episode was a perfect example of what a TV show can achieve when the creators care, which only made the countless problems with Velma all the more obvious. There was no care with Velma. None. Just ugliness from start to finish. Velma is everything wrong with modern entertainment crammed into one revolting package. Nothing but bitter, cynical, hateful, spiteful, loathsome, narcissistic trash. The only thing it deserves is to go away and never be thought of again. I wish I could forget everything I know about it. But the one silver lining in all this is that pretty much everyone, even mainstream critics, are calling this thing out for the garbage it is. And the backlash to this show 
show could potentially be so extreme that after it inevitably gets canceled, with any luck, Mindy Kaling won't be famous anymore. Peace out, Mindy. And for God's sake, take Velma with you. If that dumpster fire was any indication of what 2023 has in store for us, then I'm worried. But I'll still be here, and hopefully I'll be able to spare some of you guys the pain of having to experience this crap for yourselves. You're welcome. Thanks so much for watching, and while you're here, please do all the other YouTube things. Ding the bell icon and follow my social media so you can always be notified when I upload new stuff. Links to everything are in the description box. Hit that thumbs up and leave a comment. It really helps me in the war against that big red bastard YouTube algorithm. Share the video, subscribe, make sure you're still subscribed, and I'll be back with more soon. Take care, stay tuned, I'll see you next time.